In this video, we'll talk about competent hosts. That means the host cells in which we want our desired gene to replicate, how to make them competent to perform the same process which we want them to, that is replication of the vector along with the desired gene. And we will also discuss the methods of introducing vectorless gene. So let us first talk about competent hosts. We can use eukaryotic as well as prokaryotic cells as hosts. So when we say prokaryotic, the most common prokaryotic cell which is used is E. coli. So most commonly used prokaryotic host cell is E. coli. And amongst eukaryotic, eukaryotic cells, we have three options. We can use animal cells, plant cells, and even fungi. Amongst fungi, the most commonly used fungus is yeast. So, most common amongst prokaryotes is E. coli and most common amongst eukaryotes is the fungus that is yeast. Now, how do we make them competent to uh, let this RDNA replicate and the desired gene replicate? The first thing is the plasma membrane should be exposed. In case of animal cell, there is straight plasma membrane, but in case of E. coli, plant cell and fungi, there is a cell wall outside it. So we would uh, be required to remove the cell wall. Cell whose cell wall is removed, that is cell without cell wall is known as protoplast. That means, in case of plant cell, fungal cells or E. coli, we will have to first create a protoplast. That means, we will be required to dissolve the cell wall which is around it. After that, the cell has to be treated. This is step number one. Step number two is, the cell has to be treated with some divalent ions. The reason is plasma membrane is hydrophobic due to presence of the lipid bilayer and the particle which we want to, uh, to go in that is DNA is a charged particle. So plasma membrane is hydrophobic and our DNA is negatively charged. So this negatively charged particle cannot pass through this hydrophobic plasma membrane. So, we add divalent ions like calcium. So, calcium ions increase the permeability of the membrane. And once the permeability increases, these charged particles simply move in to the cell. So first create a protoplast that is remove cell wall, expose plasma membrane. Plasma membrane we know is hydrophobic because of that phospholipid bilayer. So we add calcium like divalent ions which increase the permeability. Now that gene has gone in. Next stage is we want that gene to attach to the host DNA. For that Step number three is, we give a shock treatment to the cell. And this shock treatment is actually a heat shock. We first place those cells on ice, that is on ice block, and then shift it to a little hot condition. The temperature is 42 degrees Celsius. And then bring it back on ice block and then again shift it to hot. So we are giving a cold, hot, cold, hot shock treatment. By giving this shock treatment, 
the insert or the gene which have we have introduced into the cell binds or attaches to the host DNA. Now, we have introduced this desired gene without any vector into this protoplast, DNA gone in and with this short treatment, the DNA goes and binds with the host cell. Now, when the host cell multiplies, this insert or gene will also multiply with the host DNA. So, this is how we make our host cells competent to perform that process of replication of the desired gene. Now, let us talk about certain methods by which we would introduce our insert without vector. So, the methods for vectorless gene transfer. methods for vector less we are not using any carrier or vector there are four methods which we normally use first is a chemical method in this chemical method the protoplast again what we are using is a cell without cell wall is kept with the desired gene and these two things that is protoplast and gene are kept in a medium containing PEG that is polyethylene glycol. So when we keep protoplast with the desired gene in a medium containing PEG, the gene automatically enters into the host cell. So this is a chemical method by which our gene has gone into the cell without any vector. The second method is known as gene gun method it is also known as shotgun method or biolistics it is called biolistic method in which dna is coated on gold particles or tungsten particles gold or tungsten particles Suppose this is our gold particle, we will coat it with the DNA and this DNA is nothing but that desired gene which we want to introduce into our host cell. This particle that is gold particle or tungsten coated with DNA is going to act like a bullet and these bullets are shot on the host cells at a speed, okay before that the size is 1 to 2 microns the particle size or that bullet which we are talking about its size should be about 1 to 2 microns and it has to be shot at a speed of 1400 feet per second normally the speed whenever we talk of speed the units which are given are meter per second this is the first time when we are talking about a different kind of unit so we have to remember the number it is 1400 feet per second the speed has to be exactly the same the reason is if it is more than this then the particle that is our bullet is going to go through and through the cell and it will come out from the other end if the speed is less it is going to bang on the plasma membrane and would get rebound unless and until this is the speed it will not reach into the cell so particle size 1 to 2 microns the speed with which these particles are shot is about or not about is exactly 1400 feet per second these are two methods the third method is called electroporation
in this electroporation we take the cell in a medium and pass electric current at a very high voltage for a very short period of time because of this high voltage for a very very short period of time the membrane develops tiny pores these pores are temporary so if this is the cell and we pass this high voltage electric current there there would be a tiny pore produced and if we have kept this cell with our r dna or only the gene this particle would enter through this pore into our host cell and as we said these pores are temporary once this particle has gone in this pore will close on its own so this perforation which is created is a very short lived perforation once the dna or the gene enters then the pores close on their own fifth sorry fourth method fourth method is called micro injections micro injection is normally used when you want to introduce the gene into animal cell this is a very uh, sophisticated method because everything has to be done under a microscope you are dealing with a human cell and most commonly the human cell which we are dealing with is the egg so when the gene is to be introduced into the egg then we know that the nucleus is slightly on one side it is eccentric and the gene has to go into the nucleus it is not like a prokaryote that you just introduce it into the cytoplasm and leave it there the gene has to go into the nucleus dealing with human egg cell is again tricky because we get human egg cell after every 28 days or 30 days of this complete menstrual cycle on 14th to 16th day the egg would be released so we'll collect this egg introduce this gene if something goes wrong we have to wait for another a month's time the instrument which we use is a slightly peculiar instrument in which there is a vacuum pump and this vacuum pump creates a little suction to hold the animal cell here the suction or the pressure with which we are holding the cell has to be very minutely monitored and created if the pressure or the suction is more the cell will be sucked in if it is less the cell is going to fall down to introduce the gene there has to be a guide this guide actually is required to guide that needle which is going to inject the desired gene so this blue line here is representing that needle which brings our this is desired gene and say here is the nucleus so to guide it right into that position there is a guide which will let that needle go right in the particular position and we have to do it under the microscope because we are dealing with a single cell so this is very expensive device it is highly sophisticated and has to be done by specialists so these are four methods which we use the first one was chemical second one was the gene gun method or the biolistics third is electroporation and fourth is micro injection so here we don't need any vector to carry our gene we directly introduce that gene into the host